Hello there everyone, Ashen Flash here and welcome on into my spoiler review for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. We're going to have a bunch of different topics if you want to hop around in this video. The first and only spot here at the top of the video that we're not going to talk about spoilers in non-spoilers. If you don't want to hear anything else, that's the only bit that you should be watching, including later on when we talk about Lego Talk. So let's go ahead and let's kick things off with non-spoilers. Non-spoilers, I don't think that this is my favorite one. If I had to place it in terms of just the three of them, I think it would be at the bottom. I still think that number one and number two were just, at least with number one, it was just so special. And number two, I feel like had just I was going to say a lot more heart, but that, that may not be the case. Different, different heart. It was just more light hearted, maybe is a better phrase to put it. This was a very dark film. Like it really was. And I'm, I was trying to wrap my mind around like what other MCU movies were this dark in terms of just the topics, I guess of you know genocide and torture and even just like some of the violence and everything else in this like it was it was pretty dark and you know it's the third one as well and the finale sort of for this team as they've talked about before so i'm fine with that but yeah it was uh it was it was very very heartfelt as well though i think that some of the moments with certain characters just every single moment they were fantastic, and it's really hard to talk about this without going into spoilers, but yeah, I just don't want to spoil anything for you, because going into this film, I think everyone had a certain mindset and an idea of like what they expected going in, so I, again, I don't want to change that for you. It's probably best that you experience that for yourself, but let's go ahead and let's get started. I want to talk about Rocket, since... He's the heart of this film. I also am a little confused by what James Gunn has said about he's been the secret protagonist of the Guardians this whole time. No. <laughs> I, I thoroughly disagree with that statement, especially since the second film is quite literally all about Star-Lord. So I don't agree with that at all. I don't, I don't look back at how he was the the main and secret protagonist in the holiday special like i just i don't see it i i in the first one i'd say they're all sort of their own protagonist but again it's probably still star lord here you know rocket does take center stage and rightfully so i i really will say every single flashback scene that he had Either I was tearing up or just or just crying. Like, it was very, very heartfelt. And his friends were just so, so cute with Lila. Very, very fun. Um, incredible performance there. And Teefs and Floor were great as well. And it was just, it was just so sad, you know? It was just, it was just so sad. Everything to see his backstory that, you know, we've been speculating on for almost a decade at this point now, almost... It's pretty crazy that we finally got to see where he came from and just his really horrible, and I don't mean that in like, you know, bad writing, but just as in like what he went through was genuinely horrible and just seeing him become this leader, I think, for the future of the Guardians, but even in this film and I think that him rescuing all of the lower life forms as they called it, I think was very good. The high evolutionary, his dynamic with him was very fascinating. I like the idea of he became obsessed because a creation of his was able to solve a problem that he never could. I love the idea of that. And he was obsessed and wanted to know why that was. How could something that he created be smarter than him? I really, really enjoyed his performance, like just, just a crazy guy creating life and just, ah, uh, it failed. Let's just start again. Insanity. Um, I also wonder like, is he going to be like reporting these things to like a board on, on the company? Like that's where my mind went. Cause they're like, oh, you're in all these different companies. And 
yeah, if he's just destroying this project that he's been pumping so much money and things into, I think that's pretty crazy. But uh, I also really loved just Rocket shredding his face, like, you know, as a raccoon does. Like, raccoons just, you know, they lash out like that. So that was pretty crazy to see the aftermath of that. That was a pretty good reveal, I think, as well. And this guy who thinks he's a god, lowercase g, you know, again, despite his intellect and he thinks that he's just this important being in the universe, he still, you know, he can't fix the damage that Rocket did to him. He has to wear this mask, this facade, I think, was really poetic as well. Next up, I think, is probably talking about Star-Lord. I really enjoyed him in this, like him being depressed on a, I guess, even further level than the holiday special, I think was, uh, he, he did a great job and blaming himself for, you know, if he wasn't moping and if he wasn't drunk, maybe he could have done better. But I thought that he, he was really great throughout this whole thing, like just clever in certain things that he did and tricking people and uh, he, was just, he was just fun really love star lord um you know again going back 10 years i got a red leather jacket because i love the first guardians movie so much so for this to be coming to an end you know it's sad and i think that mantis challenging him about you know you still have other family on earth and that you abandon i think and seeing him go back that was it was a very nice sort of ending for him i guess full circle moment for him going back to where it all started I think was very very great I enjoyed just some of the moments that he had with Gamora and I think it was really interesting to see him try and talk to her and have her remember or at least give her a sense of like what they were like before and her <laughs> calling him Quinn was quite funny um, I think that the bits that she had here were really great Again, they mentioned how, like, the old Gamora was always looking for a family, a place to belong. And she has found that with the Ravagers, whether or not, you know, we like that because she's not with Star-Lord and her sister and everything else. I still think, you know, at least she has someone with the OG Guardians crew, which were really great to see back here. Uh, let's talk about T Mantis. Again, really great had a lot of heartfelt moments and I like how she was looking out for her brother from afar trying to feed her wisdom through Drax because no one listens to her I thought she was really great in this very funny and uh, a lot of the moments that she had she's just it, she's so innocent and just being tricked by Drax and and then I don't know it's she's just great as always Drax I don't know. I'm I'm over Drax. I, I have been since Infinity War. Like, he literally made a poop joke here in this film. So I don't really have much to say about him. He had some good moments here, and I appreciate that, you know, he's not Drax the Destroyer. He's He was meant for more things, to, to be a dad, and now he's going to be, you know, this father figure and looking after all these kids after he lost his daughter to Thanos and Ronan, I think was very, very good. But we've also got Nebula, who was also really cool here. I don't necessarily know if she had too much, like, you know, any character development, I would say. Maybe just, I guess, realizing, not to judge people, I guess, with Drax, but she was awesome here with the new arm upgrade that Rocket gave her. I think that was really fun. And then who else do we have on the Guardians team? Groot. Groot was Groot. He was Grooting about. Uh, I really enjoyed just some of the things that they did with him in terms of like, oh, he hit all the blasters inside of him or even just, you know, he was decapitated, but he was still able to constantly regrow back. And and of course, we'll talk about him at the end, uh, what, what they did with him. But yeah, Groot was, it was fine. I think he said, I was trying to count, I think it was like, five I am Groots in the whole film maybe six because well because the scenes at the Gamora at the end so seven there was less than ten for sure and then he said I love you guys can't wait for his next word for him to learn his family and I was like I was expecting him to say I love you guys it's all about family and whatever else because it's Vin Diesel 
thinks that he's God's gift to the world. Anyways, um, we <laughs> have two other Guardians members that I want to talk about, and I really, really loved both the members that stayed behind. I'm sad. Craglin and Cosmo stole every scene they were in, I would say. Like, Cosmo was hilarious, genuinely hilarious and fun. Their the dynamic with <laughs> Craglin was just so great about him calling her a bad dog and the whole time sh her wanting him to take it back and just hearing a dog vocalize that. And it was just very funny. And then uh, their moments of protecting Nowhere was really fun as well. And her redeeming herself in a way for Craglin, I thought they were so, so much fun. And then lastly here, Adam Warlock. Nope, didn't like that. I really just, I'm not a Marvel Comics fan in terms of I'm more of DC and I know those characters a lot more than I do Marvel. The bits that I have experienced with Adam Warlock, that ain't it. That was, uh, I, I guess they made the jokes of, oh, he, he pulled him out of his pod too soon, whatever. But I was disappointed. Like I was really going into this looking forward to him doing something and he just didn't really do anything he just caused more problems i guess he saved star lord at the end which by the way was so stupid that he went back for a, a stupid little music player but uh yeah i don't know was thoroughly disappointed by him love the little little fuzzball thing that was cute but he was just comic relief and he just I don't think he was very funny, obviously, comedy subjective, but he was quiet with a lot of the dumb things that he said and did. So anyways, I want to talk about the future for the Guardians. It leads into the end credits, so we'll just put them together here. But I really enjoyed the end credit scene, seeing the new team. I love the King Groot there. Like That design looks so, so cool just how big he is like the shaping of the head and everything there and inevitably the next avengers crossover and all that that they'll be involved with like there you go lego you've you've got a 30 dollar set right there this giant groot mech which would be so cool to get um but the rest of the team i really enjoyed uh the little girl there I, i've i've watched videos and, and heard people say her name i'm not going to attempt to say it but um, I really enjoyed seeing her there and Craiglin and Cosmo in that blue outfit was so great to see as well. And Adam there with uh, Rocket leading the team. Very, very fun. I, I am excited for them to do something else. I would love a volume four. And uh, it said, of course, with the final end credit scene that the legendary Star-Lord will return, which is great because I really love Peter and Star-Lord. Really, really awesome. I will say, though, and this talks about, I guess, a little bit of why I'm disappointed. I kind of wanted someone to die. And I know that probably sounds really bad. And I think that going into this, that's how they framed it. Maybe I feel not robbed in a way, but I feel like that was an expectation that this whole time in the trailers and like they set it in there, like it's their final whatever journey and all that. Even James Gunn saying this is the last version of the team you're ever going to see. So I feel like for over a year now, we've been building up to this expecting something, someone to die or, or, or something. And the fact that they, they didn't, I don't know. I was like, oh, they're going to kill Star-Lord because of a stupid music player that you could, I'm sure you could just visit Earth and get something better. You, were, you just came to Earth in December. But anyways, I, I was like a, a little disappointed by that. And the fact that everyone's like, oh, I'm not going to return. Uh, I'm not going to be painted green. Yes, he's green. Uh, or even Gamora not wanting to do this again either. It's like, I, I don't understand that. You're, everyone is all in a place that they can all come back. And guess what? Throw enough money their way. I'm sure we'll see them in the Avengers films. All right, let's do Lego talk. Let's talk about the three sets that we got. I think that for the builds, I'm trying to think of like the only other set that I could think that they could do 
is sort of something like Namor's throne room where it could have been like the high evolutionary's ship command deck. I think that would have been really cool to see. I'd love like a micro scale build of nowhere or even actually the high evolutionary ship as well would be really cool to get. I'm just really sad that we didn't get the villain again. Like I look back at Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and we still don't have an ego minifigure. And now with this, we don't have a high evolutionary figure. Like, the heck, Lego? Like, wh wh where's the villains here? And Adam Warlock did nothing. So he's the main antagonist in the Lego sets? Ugh. Um, also, I'm just sad. This, again, we don't have Kraglin. And we didn't get Cosmo in the set. So I'm, I'm a little disappointed by that. I still think that, like, the smallest set is really great for what you get with their little headquarters. I really like the sign and all that. And if, if Star-Lord wasn't in another set, and maybe that was someone else like Kraglin, I'd be a lot more on board with that. The middle set, I said this in the reviews about it should have had Lila. We'll see in the movie, you know. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't make sense for her to be there. But we do have Otter pieces, and I'm sure that they could have figured something else out there. But with the High Evolutionary just should have been in that set. That set is overpriced for what it is. I don't think that it's, you know, the most interesting thing. It was on screen for, like, five seconds. And I just, it needed something more. It needed the High Evolutionary there in that set. I'll stand by that. I think the Bowie was great. I think that that set and the figures there, as much as I'm like, eh, Adam Warlock was so disappointing, still very fitting there for him to be in the set. Anyways, final thoughts, I'm excited for their future and whatever happens going forward now without James Gunn as he's over at DC and I think that it's not my favorite Guardians, it's not my favorite trilogy in the MCU, I, I've only seen people say like, I love that film, It was it's in my top five Marvel movies, and then I see people saying, oh, it's absolutely horrible and it's the worst and I'm definitely not, I'm more positive about this film than I am negative I'd say but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the film what did you think of it are you going to be picking up any of the Lego sets now do you have any ideas for sets that you would have liked to see from this movie but I hope you guys did enjoy the video I hope you all have a great day I'll see you all in the next one